Welcome back everybody, this is Breathman here. We're going to continue our quest with Dora uh, and Sword Saint, as well as his uh, two sidekicks, uh, assistants, helpers, whatever you want to call them, the Inquisitor, Eliza, as well as uh, Proto Lich, who is our uh, undead-ish uh, sneak attacker. She is the Elder Scoundrel. Uh, for those of you that haven't played this game before, know that I am using mods. You'll notice some things. A bag of tricks is to cheat some stuff early on in the game. Uh, that was basically just to give us a, a, a little jump start on some of the scrolls that were level 1 and another one at level 2. Uh, camera rotation, you'll notice every once in a while I rotate the camera so I can get a better feel of where my teammates are moving. And that's something you can't do without this. Amazing upgrade in my opinion. Uh, if you see me pick a character and try to see what scrolls they need to learn, you'll notice that those scrolls that they can scribe to their book turn green. And therefore you'll notice that. That's different than the main game. The real big changes, though, are things like remove area effects, uh, where I can literally take like a spell like web or grease or something that persists after a fight and make it just disappear. Uh, Eldritch Arcana, a very amazing mod. Um, one of two out there that I know of that adds spells and other features to the game. So again, if you see something that I can do that you can't, chances are this is where it's coming from. Of course, the big one is turn-based combat. So literally, I can uh, play it like it's D&D. &D. I highly recommend you play it this way as it is more pen and paper feel to it, uh, more tactical, and uh, quite frankly, it's less of a cluster pile. Takes longer, I don't mind it being longer, uh, but it is one of those where I'd rather know where my teammates are moving. And if you're having issues with the original version of the game that doesn't have turn-based because it's real-time pause, that's just a mess, um, maybe you want to get this mod in this mod alone. Uh, you will feel the difference. There are some tricks to uh, be employed while you do this, some stuff that I still mess up on, so feel free to watch me make mistakes. But let's get into it, shall we? Uh, for those of you that didn't watch the last episode, and again, I don't uh, feel bad for you not watching the last episode. It was an hour and a half-ish of me getting my kingdom and showing you some kingdom stat stuff and how to make your kingdom better. So we really didn't get any gameplay, per se, and uh, none of the action, the fighting, the stuff that you expect. Uh, but this will be the, the episode where we actually start doing things for ourselves. So we'll actually let's get into it, shall we? I have gone to the vendors. Uh, I believe we have purchased some supplies. I've leveled people up. Uh, one or two levels here and there for some people that weren't on the team. Like Amiri uh, got leveled up and so did like Valerie. I'll show you that real quick. Um, Jaithel got leveled up. Remember, she wasn't part of the team at all. So she's leveled up. So she's a level 3 character now even though she started at level one when we got her uh you see that we have octavia got a level up so she's just continuing with wizard but i'm grooming her so she can actually go into the arcane trickster so you can see what she's capable of as an arcane trickster that's the the traditional arcane trickster whereas my undead proto lich is the eldritch scoundrel kind of the watered down version i hate to say it that way so they have a lot to offer but it is different i want you to see a, like a direct apples to oranges comparison here between the two types because it is a different feel. Uh, we have Amiri got a little bit of a level up so she's level 4 barbarian now so she dinged while we were basically getting our kingdom. I just made her more of a barbarian. Uh, and Valerie she was uh, level 1 or 2 and she became level 3. Uh, some of the stuff that you will see as far as differences um, you'll see that in many cases I grabbed additional traits. Instead of grabbing an actual feat uh, I actually gave them stuff that they wouldn't be able to get unless it was like literally at the beginning of the game. So for example, she has a uh, heirloom uh, family uh, heirloom weapon in a specific weapon choice. In that case, it was the Bastard Sword. Why? Because it gives her a bonus to the Bastard Sword. Normally, it would give her a Magic Bastard Sword to start the game off with, but she's not going to get that. If you actually look at her inventory, or our inventory, nothing's here. She didn't get anything. She starts sadly with her Masterwork Bastard Sword, and I'm okay with that part. I just wanted her to be trained, uh, so that was the rationale there. Uh, so again, other stuff though, like um, Fast Talker, I know that she's going to do persuasion checks for us. Notice this gives a persuasion as a skill for you if you didn't have it already. She already did, so the green check mark, but she gets a little plus one. And I figured that makes sense for what she does, or will do for us. Also, I gave her reactionary, so she has a bonus to initiative checks, so that's going to be something that's particularly nice. Other examples of stuff that I gave to people. Um, uh, didn't do anything here because she didn't have a feat, but Octavia, she 
she have anything? You know, accomplished sneak attacker. So I needed this to happen at level four or sooner so that she could have two dice worth of sneak attack damage because that's a prerequisite along with her uh, four points into mobility, four points into trickery, and four points into knowledge arcana. Those all have to be at level four. Four points actually invested in it, not the 12 that you're seeing here, the actual four purchases, if you will, into each of those three things. Now, she has all her requirements now, so at level five, she can really go into Arcane Trickster, the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the epic class. So she can start dipping into that immediately, which is okay. She'll still progress as a wizard as far as casting, and she gets some extra sneak attack love, which is part of the reason you want to do it. <coughs> Excuse me. Other things for like Jaythel, uh, you'll see that we actually did her the same way where she actually got herself um, additional traits. We also made her susceptible, spell vulnerable, so I could get an extra feed out of it because I wanted to make sure she still got power attack. So she's vulnerable. I made her vulnerable since she's undead. I made her vulnerable to transmutation spells, which are the divine damage as well as transmutation spells. Makes sense to me. Um, so just like our undead character, Proto Lich. Uh, I gave her things. Um, that I didn't have to give her. Uh, so she already was an undead curse and undead creature and all this fun stuff uh, preemptively. They gave her that to you already. I gave her emotional drawback. Oh, by the way, they all have some sort of emotional drawback that I chimed in with, which made sense. Like, uh, she's for cruelty. So on a, a flank target, she does more damage. If they're not flanked, she does less damage or uh, less likely to hit. So she really needs to be up with somebody else on the team, you know, flanking somebody. But she's probably going to do that anyway. I gave her, again, equipment trait where she has a family heirloom of a uh, scythe, so she gets a bonus to swing her scythe, as you can see. Again, normally if this was level 1 character, they'd start off with a magical scythe. She does not have that. I found one for her, so that's fine. Uh, notice that she's noble-born. I don't know if this is actually canon. I don't care. I did this one specifically because L Lebeda gives you a list of things that you can pick from. One of the things is she can use her judgment ability an extra number of times a day. One, I haven't tested it, so I wanted to see if it worked. Uh, so she only has one right now here. Then she gets another one here, here, and on up it goes, all the way to a maximum of six. So now she should have three all the way to a maximum of eight, if that's true. I don't know what it is. I haven't tested it yet, but that's the goal. Uh, also, uh, wisdom in the flesh, amazing uh, faith trait. Uh, literally, you can take any physical, so, or sorry, strength, charisma, or dexterity skill and use your wisdom instead of those uh, two stats, strength, uh, or, sorry, strength, charisma, or dexterity instead of wisdom. Only get to pick one. So, uh, since she's already pretty strong, there's no need to put it in athletics. Since she's kind of dexterous, we really don't really put anything into mobility, trickery, or stealth for her, so I didn't really need that. But I thought for charismatic purposes, why not have her intimidate? So she has a bonus to her persuasion. So if you go to persuasion here, uh, you'll actually see um, charisma still at plus two. When it's an intimidation check, she'll be getting it as a plus three uh, because it's keying off of this stat. And obviously this is her main stat along strength. So these will be the two that I try to ra uh, raise higher throughout the game. So that made sense to me. And I think for Valerie, the um, scary thing that I did for her for emotional damage uh, was I made her snobby. It's not the proper term, uh, but that's basically what she is. So since she's always thinks she's better than everybody else, I basically gave that as her emotional trait. I don't know what penalty that actually poses on her. Probably a penalty to her persuasion checks, but whatever. Um, notice that we have... Uh, Companion quest still, so proof of our worth, sorrow flow, uh, find casting the capital that was done in the previous mission where we basically were having the big party to, to salute me as the new Baron. Um, Harem talked to us and wants us to show him these, so this is a reminder to bring him when you find the Dwarven Ruins to ta make him tag along. Basically gets uh, XP for that and so will the team. Just reward, uh, so this is literally the Nymph talked to us and she wants to hang out. Uh, as far as the Stolen Lands, it's done. Same with the prologue. So this is our um, intro chapter, and this is chapter one. It's all finished, nice green check marks, so you're happy. Uh, Ancient Curse is coming along. We have 27 days and 9 hours before that thing's going to be here. Now that means before this timer runs out, you have to go to the Bald Hilltop, which is right next door, 
and kick its ass. So it will warn you when it gets close. However, I remember from the last video, if you didn't see it, there's ways for you to um, jump start the time and, and like skip days, multiple days, and in some cases 14 days. And as such, that could be a serious no-no. So be real careful with that shit. Um, keep an eye on your timer at all times. Now, who are we going to take with us? We're just going to go probably heading over to Bakken. Uh, remember, we have to go talk to him with some of the quest givers. Said, hey, you know, Bakken, now that we took over the outskirts, which is the territory to our north, which includes Oleg's trading post, Bakken's just sitting around doing nothing. Why don't you go and, and, and see if you can convince him to become our alchemist? He's going to be one of our first artisans. We want to go do that. I'm going to take Lindsay with us. Um, I don't know that that matters. I'm just saying that I wanted her to be on the team. She's a, a spot healer. She's good at range. She's good at buffing. As long as she's got point blank shot and precise shot by level 3, which is what she has, then she should be fine. That's all you really need her for as far as feats are concerned, as far as I'm concerned. Anything else is just gravy on top. So she's just going to be a ranged attacker slash teammate buffer. Uh, since we are now owners of the land, you'll notice that I am going out of my way to unlock all the roads. This is the bald hilltop. This is where you constantly go for curses. It's constantly going to happen. Sorry for the spoilers. Uh, but basically, in 27 days, we'll have to fight something there. Uh, and then about a month or two after that, we'll have to go back and fight something again there. And it's just going to be a repeated process of annoyance. Uh... I'm going to, like I said, open roads. Also, it gives us a chance with our new team to perceive new possible territories that we may have missed. As I told you before, there's perception checks. But by and large, once we get to the point where we can go to just Oleg's, I'm just going to make a straight beeline then for Oleg's. We'll get a quick save here, though. Uh, now, you'll notice that since this is technically my kingdom, Resting one of the upgrades... Nice, don't you think? One of the upgrades to the area is I can actually go to my overland map for the kingdom management that's pretty handy the one thing i can't do here or i can sign people i believe as so long as you're in your kingdom and that includes the territories that you take over which we've taken over this territory that's awesome so i can do all this stuff put people on quest cancel quests all that fun jazz add an advisor anything that you would be able to do from here you should still be able to do the one thing i can't do is if you see the last video you saw we had someone in the throne room wants to talk to us i can't go to the throne room and teleport there so I literally had to walk or run all the way back to base to talk to them. I have to actually be in the throne room to meet advisors. It's a thing. By the way, here's our town. You see it over here. Um, we want to go there just so I can show it to you. And of course, so we can rob our people. I know it sounds weird. It's a very odd mechanic that they've had to the game. We can go inside the houses of your various peasant people and just loot the stuff. <laughs> I'm your baron. Give me your shit. Wait. And you just do it. Now you'll see that this is one of the few times we're actually here with the whole party. Uh, normally this is a rest zone. It still is. So you can still press R and do that thing. We have sold off our stuff. There's nothing we really want to buy from Oleg. So let's just straight up talk to Bakken. Bakken smiles at you. Oh, it's you. Want to buy something? Bakken, how would you like to become my court alchemist? The old man peers at you with an inquisitory squint. A court alchemist? Me? That'd be a first. Bakken finally sighs and waves his hand. Gah, fine. Come what may, you've been kind to me. Killed those damn spiders and brought an old man some berries. I'll work for you. Just one thing, though. I need a new laboratory. Some place to keep my bottles and ingredients. A workshop, yes. And as for me, don't you worry. I'll do my part. Big chunk of XP. If I would have went here solo, that would have been all me, baby. That would have been a very nice bump. Um, and again, we could um, see if he has anything for sale. We got a person that's leveled up. We'll do that here in a mo. But uh, that was a nice little bump. I won't lie to you. Remember, uh, we have a pack limit. We don't want to get crazy here. But if there's a scroll or two or some potions you want to tap off on, feel free to. He'll always be here, so it's not like we don't have to get them now. But uh, if there's something that strikes your fancy, you know, maybe you just like, oh, I really didn't want that. You know, feel free to buy it now. I'm there. You'll notice that Jihad and Tristan are gone from here. They're actually at the kingdom. Svetlana and Oleg and Bakken are the only ones that should be here. Um, and a random dog. Or those are our pets. Um, also, there will be the, the typical people inside. So, uh, let's actually do our level I will for not our Inquisitor. Falter. And we got a piece of paper from it. Little bitch, no. On the other side was the Inquisitor. Okay, she is level 5. 
Inquisitor. So level six. I want to make sure her persuasion gets to six because we're building her for power attack slash corn against smash. So uh, on this level, some skill rank like always. Again, uh, I want to get that up to six. That's key for a feat that's coming up. Everything else come up. That's fine with me. Athletics. Uh, we'll bring you up as well. It's a little behind, but that's okay. But at this point now, everything you see is going to just steadily, steadily go up, up, up. And this should give her... Ooh, the new Summon Monster 3 spell. So she can have... Spell-like ability, excuse me. So she can have, like, a shit ton of dogs. Instead of 1d4... So let me just pop it open so we can read it. Instead of 1d4 plus 1, remember we have this feat back here. Superior Summoning. This allows her... To uh, turn anything that's a multiple summons into another plus one. So instead of 1d4 plus one, it's 1d4 plus two. Instead of 1d3 wolves, it's 1d3 plus one. So a minimum of two, maximum of four. Minimum of three, maximum of six dogs. Or if it's just a single, it's still just the single. So you only get one lizard. But that gives us three options. A really tough lizard, which can poison, by the way. And I think it has some other fiddly bits about it that's pretty badass. Uh, the wolves, and they trip and hit hard, and we have multiples now, and a crap ton of dogs. So if you just need fodder on the field to just lock up lots of dudes, summon the dogs. Otherwise, go with the wolves, because they hit hard, do a good job. If it literally is something that poison is going to be necessary, or maybe poison's an issue, use the monitor lizard. Uh, we're going to check this to make sure we want to keep all our spells. Looks good. Keep all spells. Remember, this is a way to choose stuff that you know is going to be great early level. This crap later on. It's one of the additions to the Eldritch Arcana that I like that you don't get in the main game, sadly. Same with here. Now here's level 2 spells again. So she has Bone Shaker, Cure Moderate. Obviously we want her to be able to heal her Undead Buddy. So Inflict Moderate is an obvious choice. But just to point out some other stuff that's going to be amazing. Delay Poison is going to be amazing for the team. But we already have one teammate that's already immune. Uh, we can get Resist Energy. will be amazing for the team. That's nice. We can protect them from five different types of elemental damage fire cold or electric or acid or sonic rarely a sonic attack out there but it's a thing lesser restoration is going to be amazing see fizz is extremely useful uh, so again this one's personal though but still lots of good choices and uh for example delay poison while it may be amazing you may be like well but at level three i can get delay poison communal which is an aoe version doesn't last as long as one hour period but so what that's more than enough to explore a map, so I'll just wait to get that one. Well, why wait? Get this one. When you get to level 3, it'll say, do you want to keep all your spells? No. I'll swap out Delay Poison and grab something I do want, like uh, Castigate, like uh, Effortless Armor, Whole Person, you know, whatever. You get the point. Same with See Invisible. While this one's personal effect, and that's extremely helpful, at least have one person that can see invisible things, It'd be nice to have the AOE version, the communal version. Well, that shows up at level 3 or level 4. So again, when that shows up, relearn this spell. Grab Lesser Restoration, which you know you're going to want always, always, whatever. You get the idea. Uh, I'm going to grab the that Inflict Moderate Wound, so again, we can keep up on the healing for our teeny. Beautiful. Oh, and now we have Bane Weapon. It's a toggle for her, unlike me. A rest would be welcome. Oh, I know, honey, once you're tired. Bane Weapon is a toggle... I'm going to put it up here. Uh, literally for a combat round. Basically, any weapon she wields, any weapon she wields, turns into a Bane weapon for the target. What does that mean? It's a plus 2 to the swing, plus 2 to damage, and then it does 2d6 of force damage besides. Something that's not heavily resisted. Basically, it's guaranteeing that you're going to do extra damage to whatever target you're fighting. So there's usually Bane categories, like Undead Bane, Fey Bane, Dragon Bane. So literally, the weapon is specific for fighting those guys. This is generic Bane, which means it works on anybody, which is awesome. So anytime you have the ability to have a Bane weapon like that, that's pretty sweet. Now notice we have lost our two pets down here. Let me take out that scroll because we got our new uh, recruits. So we got wolves, monitor lizard, and multi-doggies. Um, we need to head back to base. We are tired, but not so tired that I care. I do have supplies for camping, right? Yeah, I do. So I could rest here. Remember, it's just like a safe zone, just like always. So press R, you'll rest, and you go upstairs. I don't particularly care. I think we can push our luck just the tiniest bit more. 
try to save on some time. Remember, we are under a time crunch throughout this entire game. It may be a long time crunch, but it's still there. So don't get crazy with the naps. Uh, what do we want to do from here? So Bakken's on our team. We need nice. to go to our don't you think? trade guard here. We'll probably rest here. Someone will be exhausted at that point. And we'll explore this part of the map as we curve around towards going back home. Remember, we want to try to be back by the first. Enter trade guard. This is our second town. After we took over the outskirts, we made this town. Uh, there's like one building that they're trying to make in it. <laughs> like the piers, I think. So, a rest when you get to a welcome. town, something you always want to do is you want I to go through I the must. whole area. Make sure there's not a named citizen somewhere. Guards don't count. So citizens and guards will always be there. But if there's a named person, trader, there you go. Now you have someone that can trade goods for you. Just like any other trader, nothing fancy. They'll have magic weapons. You can sell stuff to them. They have, like, infinite cash, which is always nice. Sometimes by this building here, there's usually someone to talk to, and that's another artisan, or maybe the artisan's over here, or uh, you have a priest in every town. So, again, you can buy priestly stuff. Use the cleric, blah de blah 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 your typical potions and scrolls. So that way, you don't have to go all the way back to your main hub, if, if you will. Um, let's look at that tree here. Oh, uh, wow, it doesn't have anything though, huh? Oh, there we go. Just took it a moment to catch up. Nothing fancy, but has camping supplies, and sometimes that's all you need. And of course, the ability to sell off your goods so you can you know, take away some of the burden um, is a viable thing. Uh, as far as weight, we are a little overweight. I'm going to look for stuff that I might sell that I can lighten the load a little. I'm going to use those 17 pounds. I could probably sell seven of them, get me down a little bit, get closer. And then from there, I'll get rid of that short sword. I'm never going to cast that spell anytime soon. Put us, oh, still not enough, huh? Okay, um, Bane. Deal. All right. Oh, come on, really? Bless. Deal. Do it again. All right, now we're under. Yay, we're lightweight. I'm there. Okay. Um, notice we have a building we can go into. This is probably the building you rest in officially. Uh, notice in some of these buildings, when you go into them, you'll actually see loot. Nothing fancy. It'll be like bread, eggs, cheese, shit like that. But you can steal from them, I guess. It's, there's no consequence to it. I guess you're considered the king, and therefore have fun. Um, I am going to rest, though. Press R. And you see we just rest and we're right back where we're at. And it tells you you burnt that many hours. All the spells are back. Everybody's happy. And we go back on our merry to explore more of the map. Um, I do, however, want to do this. Now that we're in our territory, we can click. Go back to the area. Remember, Bakken needed a specific requirement. This is part of it. Artisans. You have met an artisan, a special character who can craft equipment for you from tough armor and powerful weapons to magic jewelry and scrolls. You will find one in every region, sometimes two. Uh, some of them arrive to you on their own, and others can be found in settlements. Some will actually uh, come to our capital, by the way, which is pretty badass. Having your own artisan is troublesome and expensive, and it's up to you to decide whether you want to help a particular artisan or not. So you can turn them away, or you can say, piss off, I'm not doing your quests. They'll still bring you some junk. By and large, they don't start bringing you a whole lot of anything. If you complete all their quests, though, they'll start eventually working towards their master item. And those are usually worth some serious loot, if not being extremely useful. Every artisan you meet will ask you uh, for a favor. Several, in fact. As soon as you fulfill the request, a workshop blueprint will appear in the settlement. An artisan with a workshop receives payment from the treasury and craft, crafts weapons or, or armor, whatever, for you either at your request, which means we can specifically say, hey, why don't you make me this you can't name a specific item what you can do is like they, they'll pop up like a laundry list of like three to four or five different things generic things that they'll make like why don't you make me some kick-ass armor you don't tell them what kind it may not be armor that i can even use like maybe i can only wear like light mail uh, like chain mail shirts and, and leather and stuff like that and they'll make you like plate mail or something it's uh, a list you can find online for what they'll do if you select that specific request Otherwise, you can just leave them to their own accord, and they will just make you stuff. 
so they will just continually come back and make stuff. So if you miss them at the beginning of the month when they drop stuff off, again, they leave it in your kitty, and then they'll just start making something else on their own. So don't feel like, oh, I missed it. You didn't miss anything. They're still going to come back. But uh, the master item, you honestly do want to be there when they turn it in because usually there's a little story about it. They talk about it. Well, you know, I've been sweating for days making this awesome weapon for you. And, well, it's finally done. And I've anointed it in the proper oils and sheep's blood and blah, blah, blah. I, I kid you not. It's super funny. Definitely worth uh, being back to base on time to catch them talk about that shit. Um, but, again, um, they request your help for special things. And, again, that's tor working towards their masterpiece. So, basically, there's mini quests for each of those guys. Um, I wanted to go here so that I can go up to here, scroll up with your WASD, or just use your mouse, WASD works, find your town, boom, wait, welcome to Trade Guard, uh, it's working on building, it. still not done yet, but it's working on the piers, enter Trade Guard, we want to build Bakken's uh, building, remember, they won't start working on anything for you until you make their craft and building, it's always a shop of some kind, so here's Bakken's alchemical shop, notice, Plus one to the economy, one adjacent to a tavern or a longhouse, which we don't have either. We are working on peers and that's it. Well, we don't have the BP for a lot of stuff. So we're going to make this. I am, however, going to purchase some BP. We are low. And I'll purchase 25. I like specific increments. 50s, 25s. You'll see me do 10s, 100s. This is a little weird and we are behind in the fact that um, we did not take that uh, initial handout. Remember we talked about this in the last video or the video before last. At the coronation ceremony, there was a guy there, Joseph Salinius, and he offered to give us 500, that's 500 BP, and look how low I'm at right now. 500 BP is a kickstart to our kingdom, but we have to, remember, use his craftsmen to purchase supplies, which means everything gets a, a price hike. So just a little bit, it's like 10% more, but it's not the point. It's in the long run, you'll lose out on that 500, but it's a nice kick in the pants right at the beginning. I turned it down. So you again, you'll see why uh, I'm slow at progressing. But if you buy what you need, you have more than enough to, to purchase what you want. Now again, this one's capable of uh, getting a bonus if next to a tavern longhouse. We can't afford that right now, so we'll just have to hold off on that. But that means I do want uh, two spots next to it, either to the left, to the right, or front and back. That'll touch it so that I can have it uh, touch a tavern, let's say here, and a longhouse, let's say there, or whatever. You know, here, here, here. So I've got three places that I can put those two buildings. So we'll come back to those later. Yes, I can probably afford one, but again, we're getting real low here. And again, if we ever have a riot, some people will come a month to month and steal from your ass. And if they steal more than you have in the kitty, you go into the negative kitty. Your towns... All have a um, uh, stability. The kingdom, I should say, has a stability. We're currently stable. The best is serene. We're not there yet. We'll get there and try to hold it forever. Stable's fine. Then below stable, it starts to fall into hell in a handbasket. It makes all your checks harder, and it gets worse and worse and worse from there. And it's really hard to bring it back out of the toilet. So try to keep the stable or serene at best case scenario. One of the ways to do that is to always make sure you have BP sitting in your base. Okay. That's, again, another reason that 500 BP start comes in super handy. Nothing that can be done about it. It's what it is. I turn them down. But know that if you want an easier playthrough, that's one of the ways to have an easier playthrough. Quick save here so I don't mess any of that up again. Cruising. Now, again, we have these little nodes, like this one over here. It is available for the outskirts. See that? Barony Resources outskirts. If I collect that, it takes probably 15, 1, 5, 15 BP to collect it. Uh, if I do that, then I get a plus one to my loyalty stat. What were my uh, stats? Do you remember? I can show it to you real quick. I hate coming in and out here, guys, but it's right here. So I get another plus one to my loyalty. Just a permanent buff. So 23 to 24. So if you're missing, like say I was at 19 for economy, the one that I'm trying to get to 20. If I was at 19 for economy find something on the map that gives a plus one to economy and just purchase the damn thing run you have to literally go to it collect it you know, like select it uh, so that's uh loyalty for this one for moist basin mm, nummy uh, over here is a blackberry meadow plus one to loyalty over here is a military plus two to your military very nice 
Uh, over here, and this is for the main base, Shrike Hills, so on the main territory. We get a plus one to culture if we collect that. Uh, is there anything else over here? For the North Nile Marches, which we don't own, so we can't collect it. There's a plus one to culture. We got a plus one to loyalty for the Shrike Hills again. There's going to be stuff over here. There'll be stuff over here. So again, we got a lot of stuff that we can just straight up run into and collect it for our kingdom. But again, we need BP for that. So we have to let the the weeks kind of churn by. Hoping to get, quite frankly, mugs so we can get a little fighting on because we get tired of not having anything to do. Uh, let's cut corners here. I don't want to get too far into outside of the North Nile Marches. Hey, it's a fight waiting to happen. Now, you will have random spawns. We've talked about this before. This is one of them. Now, it could be that it's an easy fight. This one looks like it's going to be. It could be that it's a giant ass troll. It could be that it's a dragon or a wyvern, probably not a dragon, but a, a, a huge elemental or, or two show up. Stuff that you just can't beat. Try your best, if not scum safe. And again, every time you get into one of these quests, if you die, the next saving point, it auto saves as you go into here. See that game auto saved? So if you want to try it again, like, oh, I just messed it up because I you know, was tripping on Lindsay's feet or something. Try it again. You know, you'll, it'll save a spot just before you can keep keep trying that that uh, encounter. It's kind of fun. Our time uh, has come. I'm going to. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to put up a bomb here. Nice little ruin. Out of my with me. way! And I want Liza to go this way. I want to see if there's anything around here besides that monster. And if so, you can run into the, the thing. Go a bit, go here. Oops, there's one. Door, I want you to go over here. Alright. I don't want to delay. I want to get one of them to walk into the bomb. There you go. It's a way for you to set magic traps. I wish they'd had more of that in the game, quite frankly. Um, all right, Proto, uh, you know Run what you them do. through. No sneak attack, because we, you know, we weren't Serves you jumping right. on the guy. But uh, again, Lindsay's a solid shot. Just as a reminder what level she is, she's not great, but it's okay. Uh, Eliza, let's charge this fool. Finish him off. <laughs> oh, big miss, huh? This All will right, hurt. Bear. Show him how it's done. Ah. Ooh, a crit, no less. Little XP, no treasure. Leave. Sometimes you, and I probably should have checked the map. Uh, the, the maps are repeating. Doesn't mean you can leave stuff there. But just because it's repeating doesn't mean you shouldn't check the map out. Because sometimes they will have buried treasure randomly there. It's not usually anything uh, worth a damn. Pardon my friend. But it's just one of those where it's just like, yeah, and it's here. Okay, notice this one. Plus two to arcane, but it's outside my territories. So, you can't collect. A rest yet. would be welcome. Oh, I know. You're tired. Scour for another fight or two while working our way back to base. Dispatch those fools! Okay, so that's what I said about an example of a fight that you might not have. This is a rough one. Because they're slower. So how about this? Because they probably spit poison. They are technically a dragon. And then they are, really. They're just not spit. Um, and there's a difference between them and a the dragon for those of you who are. They have four, uh, two legs and two hands. They actually have two legs and two hands. So, uh, they have a decent amount of armor. It's not insignificant. Touch armor. Uh, they're immune to paralysis. Monster spells out, so that's good for variety of attacks. Beat the shit out of us with multiple attacks. And they can and a poison ability no less too. So we poison protection on this one. What I'm going to do is it's Eliza's turn. We're definitely going to the massive amounts of dogs we can muster. Here. 
they died, but they're just small. See how it says on this magnet to a component, and you can even see the little uh, tooltip. Your component missing short swap, so it lets you know that you're missing. Let the wyverns do their thing. These guys are closer. So first, Lindsay, you have spells. Necessarily immune to increase spells. Yes. Got one of them. Slip the tail. Check. It's going to persist there for a few minutes. So it'll give us a chance to do what we need to do. Uh, I'm going to have the lines uh, throw off a fire bomb. These guys should not be immune to this. Because their dragons don't mean they're immune to fire all the time. I'm going to take a tiny step in front. Proto, I need you to finish off. Let's do it with the uh, Ooh, you get three of that one, two, five, eleven, and five of that. Go Proto. That is the what are you doing? I guess he chose that guy as a target, so the guy that was closer. That's what it is. Um, again, since we're probably going to take me. I'm not really envisioning going to a, a specific locale. It'll just um, blow your wad again. It's okay. Hog wild and fools. You deserved it. You don't have to deal with any real damage to the team. We saw more on the map. So again, oh geez, Louise, we're getting bum rush from behind again. All right, so again, they're slow. Rod, they have a charge. So if we want to summon more skeletons, we'll do so. If we need to summon more skeletons, so. Dora, oh, you're tired, so that's why you can't charge. But you can. is better than the dogs. We also have more strength than the dogs. So Dex and Con too. So they have more going for them. So, Proto, uh sneak attack, that's a good start. <laughs> Die just as fast as the dogs hold like this, so probably to our benefit than some of the multiple dogs. So, Step 
back. Deal with the ones that we were dealing with right now. This one's actually a. This will take out most teams. By the way. So I know it feels like we're cheesing with all the summons. Hey man, it's part of that. Blue, what's really cheesing is the skeleton army. Uh, and. The skeleton army. <laughs> so, you know, it's one of those things. It's gonna be fine. And I can get her other summons, so it's not that this was the one. I could have her spells for summon packs one and two. She's gonna have other stuff going for her. Uh, of my way! Come on, let's get a tour. Come on. Come on. They're about to disappear. Take a beat, can't take a beat. I was down. I was killed most of the dogs in the one in the river. Let's go. This is a way of doing work, though. Dora. Strike! Okay, solid hit. How many doing for health on these guys? More uh, skeletons out here before too long. Hopefully, Eliza though can do some. Strike as one. There we go. The numbers. If that just holds them for one more round, then it's a nice job in my opinion. Which up here? Run them through. Nice. Skeletons. This might be their last one. Just because they're going to fade away. Dora. I think it's time for you. Go on. Oh, that's some sexy damage right there. 10d6, that's going to look tits. Uh, if you were playing, by the way, like I said, um, a Conic, an Elder Scion that had that ability, not only can you get to 10d6, but you can get to 10d6 plus 10. Then there's a Cloak that only Reg, the one who is the Draconic Bloodline for the Blue Dragon, that can do this. That gives another plus 1 to the damage, so it could be 10d6 plus 20. Then there is a Robe that allows you... No, not Robe, a... Yeah, you know, yeah, rope that allows you to do like elemental damage, so basically fire, electric, cold, acid, and force damage gets another plus one per die roll, which again includes all your electric spells. So again, instead of 10d6 plus 10 or plus 20, now it's plus 30. Then, wait, I know. Then there's a necklace that does the same thing for, for like, the four elements. It's literally called the amulet of four elements. And it does it again. So I can do it with one swing with Reg. Best case scenario, I could do 10d6 with his shocking grasp plus 40. So again, that counts for crits too. So 10 plus 40, so minimum 10 plus 40 is 50 on a crit. Worst case scenario, he's doing 100 damage. The way that is, best case scenario, it's 10d6, so 60 is the highest, plus the 40, that's 100, and then it crits for double. So that could be 200 on the best case scenario. So if you had maximized that spell, you could just put a whooping on something. I'm just saying. You can do the same with the, uh, the other element. The one was it the corrosive touch. But that's the 5d4. So it's not as impressive. But it could be 5d4 plus 5 if you're an acid dragon type. 5d4 plus 10. Uh, sorry, 10 d4 plus 10 if you made it intensified. 10 d4 plus 20 if you wear a magic ring of acid that gives you a plus one to all your acid spell damage per die. Uh, you could also have that, that necklace that gives you another 10. So 10 d4 plus 30 now. You have the, the robe, which does it again for acid. So 10 d4 plus 40. So again, 10 plus 40, 50 is the minimum for your acid swing. Critting, it would do 100 minimum, guaranteed. Uh, best case scenario on that was not as impressive, and so as a 10d4, so 40 plus 40, that's 80 minimum, or sorry, 80 at maximum, and then if you crit, 160. Still pretty impressive, I'm just saying. And I, no, I was about to say, I think the corrosive touch is uh, not susceptible to spell resistance, that's not true. It actually is a susceptible in this game, which seems weird to me. Things like the acid should not be spell resistant, I wouldn't think, but whatever. Anyway, I'm on the tangent again. But I thought that was a nice little nugget of information. 
Lindsay, can you come over here so that you can shoot at this? You floor? deserved it. I'm still just gonna finish him off for us. A line throw. Let's see what the lizard can do. That's your monitor. Lizard. Notice it did poison damage. You saw that minus one dex. So that's poison. Helpful. That's helpful. Know that because also for your monitor lizards, you could actually click on them and see what their stats are. Um, know also that if they turn the monster against you, they can do it with like a control monster or something similar. Charm monster, whatever it's called. Dominate monster, probably. Um, he could poison your team. So be real careful with your summons. Uh, that's solid, and I, I do appreciate the dex damage of those guys. You can also see his attack. Strength plus five, so you already know what his strength is. His strength would have to be 20. That's a big chunk of the lizard. Just saying. Um, also, we can see what his damage is. 28 plus 7, not bad. He probably gets some kind of bonus, like a uh, power attack or something such. Do we see that in here? But still, solid, solid bite. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, Proto, your turn. Uh, let's delay those. Mm. Is full. Uh, oh, ah, he made the check. Boo on you. Hit them. I wish spells that hit like this had a minimum effect. They, not all of them do. This is one of the ones that um, DC 17 rolled good. And he rolled good. I mean, I'm not going to complain. It wasn't the hardest thing in the past. He had a nice fortitude check, so I probably should have rolled better. <laughs> Oh, we just tore right to the lizard, though. Dora. Oh, the skeletons are gone. Alright, uh, you're going to your turn past Lindsay, so Lindsay can get, at least get a shot off on this fool. Let's do a, um, grease spell. Yes. Dora, um, you are not ready for that fight, so fly for me. You did not buff up. So I should have Whoa, just my uh, uh, at least on my armor now is an okay 23. But what have these things been hitting our lizards at? A solid plus 10 to some of their attacks, so he can hit me on a and they get like 5 attacks. He's probably going to wail on me. Uh, it's Eliza that can do the real tank in here. Speaking do of... Do not hold back! down here. There we go. Now the skeletons will finish it. I'm not worried about it at this point. If that's all that's left on the map, then we did it. Like, you can see it's going to town. Lindsay. While your cute little butt over here. Any that last guy. wishes? Boom! Too damn. She's the one that I usually give the flaming crossbow to, for those of you that are wondering why I keep looking at that crossbow. At the vendor. She's the reason. I usually have her on the team, and I usually have her do the crossbow work. She's pretty good. I find. Tashani Savitur. Good. Proto, you're gonna have to move your butt back down here. You're still not far enough to get him, but you can probably hit him with that. I shoot the ticks. Oh, the ticks can wait. Now, do we have stuff to loot? We do. Let's make sure to loot them. Skin them. Take them Follow if you can dare. cook with our uh, camping skills. If you have the recipe. Um, and again, I could check the area out. We're in a hurry today, so I'm not going to. But I'm you there. really should probably check the area for stuff that's hidden, like hidden treasure. This is never, like I said, anything fancy. It's like maybe you get a scroll, you get some coins. But it's worth checking out. Oh, let's see, where are we? We definitely need Resting to rest. Would be nice, don't you think? Remember, we have a teammate that will never get tired, so don't count on the fact that hers will oh, I'll just wait till she does it. No. And we don't want to wait too long, because if we wait too long, remember what happens is we get exhausted. If we get exhausted, then we get straight up screwed. So we use rations. Lindsay's going to do that. Notice that her special abilities inspire competence. A bonus to everyone else's camping skills by plus two. This bonus increases for every level she gains above a certain level, so that's, that's pretty awesome. It's weird that 
I'm assuming that's tied to her being a bard, but that doesn't say that, so that's funny. Um, we have solid perception. We got everything else that we wanted to do. Let's actually just make sure that she's not just like better at me than that. Okay, just want to make sure that my cooking is slightly better than hers. Um, and we have all the spells we want. Interesting. Looks good. Everyone's rested, and we have the hearty meals. So everyone got a bonus to their saving throws for the next so much. Now you see, we have a red flag here. That lets us know our kingdom, something has happened. Uh, doesn't mean that's bad. Don't panic. Uh, we get to your zone where you can actually get the, the chance to actually click this. Change this color, you'll see it. Like so. Go to kingdom. If it's someone who wants to meet the king, then you, again, you have to go back to the main base. Merchants. New merchants have arrived in the capital. Okay. That's cool. I mean, it's not the useful information but whatever and again normally I try to be in the territories that I own um, around the 15th because another thing that will happen will be events show up usually at the first of the month but also in the middle of the month so try to be somewhere where you can immediately react to them why because if I need to put someone on a, a problem now it's better to grab it sooner than later so we try our best to complete everything that we can complete Problems first, then opportunities, then everything else is usually the goal. Notice, aha, I'll say notice that we have other stuff. We still have, just a quick reminder, enough camping supplies to camp one more time without having to worry about hunting. And we have a good hunter on the team. So we can go here, go there, go to the ruined watchtower if we want. Some of these are in our kingdom, some are not. Imagine quite a few of these are not. So let's do a ford across the Skunk River. Let's see what it has to offer, shall we? It's a fjord. I prefer chickens, but whatever. Uh, let's see, we have probably a fight. Let here. us not hesitate. So I'm not going to be in any way. I'm the dumbest snowflake, so I'll let me give my blur to him and her. I'm going to have to go with the main Air. tank and my main character. Anything is possible. Um, I'm he's always just ready. too important to die. It's a little weird that they do that to you, though. Uh, Battles she await. has the mage armor. Yes, please. Perfect. They have all those people up. Uh, she's going to summon I stand ready. Mighty Dog Armada. I don't know what the hell we're dealing with. Quick save that shit. Let's cut I left. do what I must. Got for me, losers. Okay. Now we gotta be careful. I don't have pause for when a trap shows up, but it's unlikely to be a trap in the middle of the woods. Oh, but wolves on the other hand. We shall overcome. Yeah, why? Attack. Your thing. Oh, really? She had to take the tiniest stutter step. You can do that shit. Oh, those are gonna do their fun. Uh, Lindsay, why don't you bust us up? Proto. You can't trip, but I'm gonna do a star step this way first. Let's hear you cry! Solid damage. Ooh, almost dead. Very nice. When she starts getting some sneak attack, things are just gonna drop from her cane trips alone, which is so sweet. Uh Dora's turn. Don't Here's hold me. back! Oh, I forgot. Surprise round. I should have done the five, five step movement and then attack. Allowed. Strike as one! Get all that monkey goodness. Puppers. Having the Inquisitor that can summon this is just way OP. And I've seen a playthrough, by the way. Um, an early playthrough during all the buggy mess of this This is where I stop. Years ago. Um, or a year ago, whatever. That the guy that was doing that did this specific. Um, build when he was an Inquisitor and he was the, his main character was the Inquisitor that could summon pets and he just roll stopped through so much stuff because of all these OP summons. Makes everything reasonably true. It's just like your skeletons. You know, there's not a bunch of them, but three a day, that's a big screw to the bad guys. And if I thought that we were in any real danger here, I'd summon the skeletons too so we could just finish it off quick. No more luck. Uh, Pookies are here. They look like they're engaging this one. Die! 
I need two more days of armor sneak attack. That's why I'm concerned about that. Right, wolf. Dora. You're rested up. Why don't you keep off the bus spell? So, tie up. More badass. Then charge your ball up here. Liza. Actually, charge your ass up. Take it down. Oh, swing and miss. I'm going to put us here to save the day. Yeah. Four puppies. Lindsay, do that thing. Serves you right. It's too bad. She had a pretty good chance, too. Out of my way! Race spells for the win. Love race spells. I'm off. Uh, we can, of course, collect these pelts. Potentially. Sadly, the, it's a nature check, but sadly, they don't give you any XP for it. It's kind of a shame. I think they should at least give you, like, one. You mean you went out of your way to do it? I guess the, the reward is the it fact that you're time. not. or that you can sell them for money, I guess. It's just still. I'd rather have XP. I can get money. I can get more gold. I'm there. Uh, we're just traipsing through the area, looking for treasure. We got our dogs with us. If they're hurt, it's no big deal. We'll just summon more. I see something. There's something. Shard of the Knight's Bracers. Now, this is an item that if you find all the pieces, you take it to that storyteller, the storyteller will uh, craft it into the original. It's called the Force Knight's Bracers, I think. Pretty badass. A little weird. Some of these items are great. Some of these are just like, what the hell are they thinking? All right, looks like we have a path here, but before we go to the path, I'm going to take it to the other side to see how big of an area we got. Doesn't look to be that large. Well, maybe I'm wrong. It's big. It's a decent size. We have looks like two halves of the river. Oh, it makes, makes sense based on the name of the river. Duh. It looks like I we do have what edge. I must. That's probably the river proper. Come down some more. Back to our path. All right. Here's our river. We cross it safely. Looks like we can. I'm there. Not so much river as much as it's a stream. But what else? This path. Exit. To is the exit. So two sides. In due so, time. so over here. Cut them! Ooh, we found a fight. Oh, looks like kobolds are fighting off a bunch of wolves. Now we can just let them die. Now that we're engaged in the fight, we'll get XP for their deaths. And I can even prove that to you just by moving everybody a little closer and just stopping. Eliza, in front with you. The dogs will mess it up by running in and killing shit. Like, hopefully they'll kill something of theirs. And you'll see that we get the XP for it. It's freaking hilarious. Dora, get up here, bro. Poof. Lindsay. Look at cute touchy this way, kid. We really need to get her some things that way really faster. That half and 20 foot wheel strip sucks. Ooh, see that? That's 108 XP for us. <laughs> and he critted the, the other bad guy for me. As long as, like I said, we're part of the fight, we get the XP, which is freaking fun. Um, we have uh, wolf, wolf, three of them in a cell. I don't think we need to make another summons. Do you? Not yet. Run them through. Put a little sneak attack love on the jackass, though. Make them easier to hit, like some more tricks. Uh, I'm going to have my eyes and take a step up here. We'll see about putting up a nice little flame bomb in these pieces. Big damage, jackass. Puppies, do the thing. So that's why wolves suck. He's not dead, but he automatically attack with a combat maneuver so he doesn't trip. You want to have the ability to be immune to trip, and you want to have so much armor that when you, they trip you and you fall down, doesn't matter that you really can't penetrate. Uh, we don't have a lot of people that can do that. <laughs> so, um, you gotta be careful with trip. 
Uh, obviously, the way to avoid being tripped is you basically have so much armor that they never penetrate it and trip you in the first damn place. But. I don't know that it works on the puppies, but it definitely works on our team. Closer. You deserve it. Eleven. Uh, and if you want to check that, check her um, attack bonus. See if she gets a plus one for her swing. That's point blank shot. As long as they're within range, she gets a plus one to the uh, attack and plus one to the damage. As you can see, so it's pretty nice. These are all cantrips too, by the way. And all cantrips, I believe, are point blank shot range. So you don't even have to worry about whether you're getting the bonus. You probably are just going to hear you cry. Only three plus one, that's called a point blank shot. And, uh, Purple Lich, you are. Eliza, I want you to come over. Do back not there. hold back! We'll probably have to take another knee before it's done anyway, so I'm not worried about going through some of my stuff. Ooh, and there was treasure here. Uh, that short sword, I have my ability to cast my spell. Another recipe in a soot blackened brain. Again, that's going to be another quest item. Get all five or six or seven pieces of the the soot blackened whatever, and give that to the storyteller and he'll tell you a story give you a crap ton of xp galta ragu we can make with butter mushrooms and fowl we can make that recipe because we only have two of those three ingredients but that's pretty cool and now we have this pad of leather i'm just going to drop it for now just to keep our weight low we're still overweight uh, of pelts probably again we'll pick them up when we leave the area and this is a static map the map will always be here so as far as i know anyway so there's no reason not to leave some stuff behind if it's oh, um, heavy. Okay, Torax Pendant. That's another one of those I items that you get to give to the storyteller that he just straight up says, Oh, look at this, and here's 500 bucks. And he'll just give you like random, no, not random, a specific amount of gold. So Torax Pendant's worth X. Uh, token of the Dryads worth a specific Follow amount. Uh, Rosalonic coins and the Cyclopean uh, coins are worth a specific amount. This will work! Alright, I want to delay your turn a little bit there, bro, because I don't want to get up in that guy's face. If I would have taken one more step closer, that Alpha would have been a trip in my ass and probably would have done huge damage. Okay, so why is this here? No reason for we her shall not to. Overcome. Okay, let's do this. Attack! How bad is this? Oof, only two armor he's got. A lot of natural armor, dex bonus. And remember, we're playing on the normal difficulty, so when we do the challenging and the, the hard and the unfair difficulties, he gets a bonus to not only his dex, but then he'll get a flat bonus besides, and you'll see like plus two, plus four. His dexterity will go from plus four to like plus five, plus six, plus eight. So you can see why the hard difficulties, they really are hard. Um, we'll enter a turn. Let the dogs come over here to take some of the heat off me so I can have Dora backpedal his happy ass out of there. Proto, five foot step back this way, kiddo. And we're going to summon some skeletons. Right on top of this place. I want him being hit multiple times. There's one. Uh, Lindsay, you're going to sing a little song. Step a little step. Dora, five foot step away from this fool. And why not you... Magic missile on his ass. Ooh, here's some damage. How hard is he to hit? Oof. He's less than half. Or a little more than half. Uh, and how was this attack on Eliza? Eliza was rocking a 28 armor class. Thank God we buffed ahead of time. Because he was swinging for a 25. There's not a lot of people around that have a 25 armor, so we did pretty good for ourselves. Strike as one! No, it's good. We could have obviously asked about flaming nunchakus. Proper attack. Yeah, yeah. Proto, sneak attack. Die! And yeah, so much easier to hit him with a sneak attack with a ray spell. Because touch attack, his armor was still impressive at a 14. Not that impressive. So we just had a solid, solid chance to hit him. 
I think she's probably gonna drop the rest of the fodder. Yeah. Go skeletons. We probably didn't need the skeletons it for that, but talk. I wasn't sure how, how long those puppies were gonna survive. You know, they get eaten by that big ass alpha wolf Ooh, brain. Uh, they get eaten by that alpha wolf pretty steady eddy. Uh, I'm there. In my opinion. What do we got left? Anything? Oh, we got stuff down here. Potentially. I'm off. Either we're missing our perception checks or there's nothing else there. So a lot, a lot of the stuff you can't uncover. And again, we left some treasure, we'll pick it up as we leave. Um just a quick FYI, how we doing on level? Ooh, I'm getting close. Four thousand. She's a ways away. She's a ways away. Lindsay's with the next window ding. Right on, right on. Oh, we got a ring. Does Lindsay have a ring? She does. And everyone else should it too, right? Yes. Okay, I even took one and got Tartuches and put it in there. So we'll take, uh, pack right out all the stuff and go on to the next area. Boom, boom. This video has been about an hour long, so once we get to the Overland map, I'm going to stop it and start it again. So I'll be right back. Any second now, will we? I swear. Give it a second. <laughs>